Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to discuss the hearings that were held at the Massachusetts State House, October 28th, Wednesday, concerning two resolutions on the Article 5 Convention. Actually, there was a few others that were discussed, including a resolution to say no to the Transatlantic Partnership, which was kind of interesting. Uh, one resolution was sponsored by a group called Wolf Pack and We the People. Uh, this is a left-wing organization pushing for an Article 5 Convention. The other resolution was sponsored by Convention of States. And uh, the Wolf Pack resolution, by the way, had 80 sponsors. How many? 80. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the Convention of States had about nine, all Republicans. The Wolf Pack were all Democrats. Now, uh, this was heard at the joint, uh, joint Committee on Veterans and Federal Affairs. So the 80 sponsors were both, uh, both senators and members of the House. So you know, there's 200 all together, uh, but there were 80 co-sponsors on this resolution. Uh, nobody from the Convention of States showed up to testify in behalf of their resolution. So that was kind of good news. That one would have been the more damaging one, the balanced budget amendment proposal, since there's 27 calls around the country already. And we've, if we, as, as we long contended, a call is a call regardless of the, what they put in the call, what the resolution reads, but it looks like Congress will pretty, pretty much want to match the resolutions before one is called, if one ever is called. Uh, well, the Wolfpack one, their big issue is uh, to do away with this concept of corporate personhood. That's the stated objective, but when you read the resolution, they have other things in mind, too. One of them is federal funding of elections. Now, you say, well, that will get rid of big government. No, it won't. It would give the government complete control over who the candidates are. So, anyway, uh, there were a lot of people on the, uh, on the left side there. There was there a We the People group. There were some union people. Uh, there were some business people, there was a Harvard professor, not Larry Lessig, by the way, and uh, we had uh, our, our secret weapon, Dan McGonagall, an attorney, Greg Hessian, from uh, Western Massachusetts, uh, who really knows us, he's a great attorney, he, uh, he's a JBS member, Catherine White, who uh, is a constitutional specialist, she teaches a subject on the Constitution, and uh, my colleague, Chris Stevens, and myself, uh, and also, there, and I thought, boy, we're really outnumbered here. But guess what? We discovered that there were some people on the left that opposed an Article 5 convention. Now, we always knew that, but I didn't expect to see them. And so we, 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 we made our case. Catherine White was f phenomenal. And I have it on video, and, uh, our testimony. We were allowed three minutes apiece. Uh, well, Greg Hessian was the first one. And he was the first one to be against this, this Wolfpack resolution. And uh, the Harvard professor had just come up. And by the way, when one of the members of the committee used the term runaway and asked about a runaway convention, the Harvard professor said, highly unlikely. He didn't say it was impossible. Now, when you have a client, it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, there's reasonable doubt here. So, so Greg gets up there, he sits down, and he said, I'm going to read Article 5 so even a Harvard professor will understand. And there was a few, a few there was, uh, when I videotaped it, the, all of the the, uh, the wolf pack types, no smiles, you know, they were just <laughs> no humor, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, but in around the room there were some smiles, even some of the members of the committee smiled. And so Greg did a great, good job talking about uh, that, yeah, corporations aren't people, but they're made up of people. And this is a First Amendment <laughs> issue, you know. And about an Article 5 that, that it can't, you can't control it, what have you. Uh, the word democracy was thrown out so much. Everybody, democracy, we have to say about democracy, democracy, democracy. Well, Catherine White, and she's petite, she's a little lady, a little taller than you, <laughs> and great dynamic, and she sits down and she's looking at it, and she said, people, I've heard the word democracy. She says, do your homework, we're a republic, not a democracy. So I didn't have to mention that. And you note, right, it was Helen Gardner Auditorium, and right behind the, uh, you know, the committee members is this large seal, and guess what word they use to describe Massachusetts? Ah, oh, yes, exactly, right? So, kind of interesting. So, um, so we had Dan McGonagall made some great points. I, I mentioned, and what I did was I walked up and I had this in my hand, right? And I got a funny look from Mike Rush, who is the member of the chair of the committee. He's actually my state senator. He's sort of a moderately conservative uh, Democrat, a really nice guy. I said, oh, don't worry, this isn't my testimony. It's your homework. <laughs> so, when I, uh, so when I spoke, I said, Congress thinks it will control an Article 5, contrary to what 
And I also mentioned, we weren't trying to bash anybody. We weren't trying to say, oh, these people are awful, as they try to bash us. In fact, one of the Wolfpack guys that testified made reference to us. And when Greg Hessian got up there, one of the pan, one of the members of the committee referred to the John Birch site as much maligned. And uh, there was a few some When I got up there, I said my name, that I'm, I'm an Army veteran, because it's a Veterans Affairs Committee. And I said I took an oath of office about a half a mile from here at the age of seven, an oath to defend the Constitution when I was 17 years of age. And I'm a constituent of Mike, uh, of Mike, uh, Mike Rush, you know. So I wanted to excel with some credentials. And I said um, Congress not only thinks it does, they've tried to pass laws. And I pulled this up. I said, so contrary to what these folks say, Congress has every intention of regulating a potential convention, even though it's not passed any laws. And I said, we have no idea how the delegates will be chosen. And one of the arguments they make quite often is that uh, there's no way that 38 states, that's what it takes to ratify anything. Uh, and I said, well, first off, they may change the mode of ratification. Congress can do that to uh, conventions, state conventions. So you may not have any vote once you pass these resolutions. And then I, um, and I make reference to um, some bad amendments. I said the 16th Amendment is called income tax. That was, that was passed. And I said the 17th Amendment, I said 100 years ago, we, the states lost power because senators were ambassadors from the state legislators. And it was changed. So, so yeah, some bad things can happen. And we only had three minutes, so you can't say a whole lot in three minutes. But what we would do, and there were some people testifying against the transatlantic, uh, in favor of the resolution to say no to the transatlantic partnership, and, and of course that's our issue. I knew about that, and we were only allowed to like, say three minutes and testify. I could have mentioned it, but I wanted to get the Article Five I thought was more critical. Uh, although I had plenty of copies of the free trade, the special issue, and I everybody on the committee got a copy. And as I as the people were testifying, one guy very polished looking professor type, he was sitting down there and he was saying, we're going to lose our sovereignty, this, he sounded like John McManus. <laughs> <laughs> so he was in favor of an Article 5 convention, so I went up to him and I get my business card and, my, and the magazine, he said, you're against an Article 5 and the Transatlantic? Oh, we're going to get together, you know. Mm -hmm. So I want to just thank uh, Dan and the good people that came. We wish we had more, and one of the guys who testified in favor, he's looking around the room. And he said, where's that John Birch guy? He was talking about Greg Hessian. And I, I put my hand up. And I, I, oh, there's two of you. Well, you know, two against everybody else. Well, there was more than two. And I went, when I said, I said, there may be a lot of people in favor. And I said, but I think I can convince them to be against it. And I did mention, and all of us mentioned, that we respect their view. We understand why they want one. But this is not their. And then it was a couple. I think they were union types. Uh, the guy had a shirt on and said, corporations aren't people. So I'm thinking he's with, with the Wolfpack and the uh, We the People. And he said that he likes this amendment, you know, to end corporate personhood, but not the process. And he, he was lucky he was reading our stuff. It wasn't our stuff, but it was, he said the ACLU opposes it. He said common, co common cause and a few other groups. So we networked as well. And when I, uh, by the way, this, this, is, um, this is a document that's been out of print for a long time. What's the name Thanks of it? Thanks to my good friend Mark Affleck down in Pennsylvania. He put this in PDF format for me. What's the so name of it? Work. And then we made some extra copies. But Does it have a name? It mentions what some of it? the organizations. What's the name of it? Oh, it's the uh, hearings uh, on the Constitution Committee, the Ju Judiciary, United States Senate, Constitution Convention Procedures 1979. So um, if you want a link to it, I can send you a link to it, um, and you can download it for yourself. I have a few copies of these, if you like. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, anyway, but it said in here, uh, the NAACP passed a resolution against it. So I meant great reference to the NAACP, the VFW, the American Legion, uh, the NEA. And I said, I'm not a you know, fan of all these groups, but I said, you know, this is a veterans committee, and the VFW had passed a resolution some, you know, against this. So, I think they were listening. I think we made our points. And I know up in Maine we had hearings and we were overwhelmed there too. And the governor was in favor of the balanced budget amendment uh, con con resolution. And by the way, the word con con in Constitutional Convention was used all the time. And the Convention of States people say, oh, it's not a con con. Well, tell that to the Wolfpack people. Tell that to the We the That's all they said. I might have heard a men's convention used once. Uh, and well, after I testified, uh, Clayton, uh, Ryan Clayton, he's the Wolfpack executive director, 
He's the guy that was in Indiana uh, back last, I think it was two years ago, uh, when there was a, a gathering of mostly conservative types in favor of Khan Khan. He was there as a journalist for the Young Turks, um, Cenk, Cenk Erg, his boss. And there was a group of people, I knew a few of them, uh, who had signs, you know, no Khan Khan, stop the Article 5 convention. And uh, a lady was taking a picture on her phone, and he, he, he got in the middle of the group and flipped it, flipped, made an obscene gesture. And then he grabbed the camera, thinking he deleted it, but he did not. So, so that's the kind of guy. He's a good-looking guy. He, he looks good in a suit and very articulate. So he kind of asked me to come out and talk to him. And he told me that he thought I was an attorney. I said, gee, do I look like an attorney? I said, I don't know if that's a compliment or insult. So my Casey's not here, so I can say <laughs> he's our, one of our attorneys. And then he said... Um, <clears throat> that the article we did was not true, that George Soros is not backing an Article 5 convention, not at all. In fact, he's in favor of one. And I said, well, it's interesting because your uh, Jim Rubens up in New Hampshire, whom I debated on a radio station, accused us of taking money from George Soros to uh, oppose an Article 5 convention. And I said, well, there was a group in Montana. Now, I didn't know the facts at the time of the debate, but I learned the facts a little bit afterwards. At the time of... Um, there was a group in Montana that was a left-wing group that allegedly sent emails to some of the members of the committee hearing the resolution. There's some questions you should ask, some softball type questions. This group never showed up at the hearings. They, no one asked. They, I mean, they had no impact whatsoever. I said, if that's the case, they ought to. Uh, Soros needs to get his money back because these people had nothing. It had no impact whatsoever. So then he was very nice and he's very dis, you know, he's kind of disarming. And then he got a little. I can see a little tone has changed. And he used some kind of legal term about gross violation and what have you. And, uh, and he said, uh, there'll be a libel suit, you know. And I said to him, I said, okay, I, will, I don't want to repeat misinformation or errors, you know. That if that's not the case, that's, that's one thing. And I said, hey, you want a libel suit? I said, go ahead, do what you got to do, guy. And he shook my hand and left. So, uh, and he was very good, too. He, uh, he's a full-time guy. He's traveling around the country. And he was kind of working... You know, after we made our points, he's writing notes to give to one of the other persons, you know. So that's what we do at these hearings, so. But I do hope if there's hearings in the future, if you're available, we'd like to have you out there, you know, as a show of force. So, um, okay, I want to, and by the way, if you want to learn more about this, jbs.org slash Article 5 Convention, you go to our website, there's, uh, there's also a Facebook page called Stop the Constitutional Convention. So. Did you? We're all set, yeah. Did you cut? Oh, let me cut it.